to the challenges that are being faced here. So I leave uh, Rwanda uh, with a renewed uh, vigor and uh, intention that we should find uh, a solution that will lead to a political solution uh, to what is prevailing here. The people of DRC yearn for peace, and similarly, the people of Rwanda also yearn for peace. And so therefore, all of us combined, including SADAC, uh, should work towards uh, installing uh, peace in this area. President. Your Excellency. How are you, sir? Very well, how are you? Very well. Good to see you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Always good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Can you have a huh? Can you have a handshake like that? Have a handshake? Well, yes, yes, yes. 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 How many do you want? Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm sure they yes. want us why yes. why I see it. Yes. Thank you. Good. Hello. How are you? Good. Hello, how are you? They want to photograph us. Understanding, sitting, sitting. Running. smiling, <laughs> shaking hands. Yeah. That's what they want. Yeah. And if we fall, they want to take a picture yeah, of it. And I guess you were also part of the commemoration that uh, we have been truly honored to be part of. We came to Rwanda following the invitation that uh, Rwanda extended to us to be part of this commemoration. And we felt it important to join in uh, the commemoration of the genocide that happened 30 years ago here. And the fact that President Paul Kagame and the government of Rwanda felt that they should invite us is born out of the position that South Africa has always taken vis-a-vis uh, -vis Rwanda. We've always had good relations with Rwanda over a number of years. In fact, when the genocide happened 30 years ago, it was President Mandela who regretted that uh, we did not really fully uh, help, give a helping hand to the Rwandese at the time when they were going through a moment of catharsis themselves because we were bringing an end to the system of apartheid, and the two very important events just almost crossed uh, each other like ships in the night. So following that, South Africa embarked on a number of in initiatives, which President Kagame spoke about in his uh, speech at the commemoration today, applauding the help that South Africa post-apartheid gave to Rwanda and the solidarity that we pledged, how we helped uh, Rwanda to build or to rebuild its health system by supporting and paying for doctors from Cuba, and how we opened our universities and colleges 
for Rwandese students to come to South Africa to learn and how, he said, many of those who were trained in South Africa are today occupying positions of leadership in their, in their own country. So he applauded South Africa. That in many ways goes to demonstrate the very good and special relationship between our two countries, a relationship which over the years, yes, has faced some challenges. Uh, he and I, from the time I became president, have always sought to find ways of straightening out the wrinkles in our relationship. And last night I had an extensive discussion with him about how we can uh, refashion our relationship and uh, on a bilateral basis deal with uh, some of the issues that have to do with visas, that have to do with travel. And uh, we believe that we are definitely going to get on the way of uh, rekindling and rebuilding that relationship. I say rekindling because it is a relationship that is in existence. And um, like relationships between countries, sometimes they face challenges and uh, they wrinkle up. And so those wrinkles will be uh, straightened out. Yes, we did speak about the challenges that are prevailing now as a result of uh, the situation in the, in the eastern part of the DRC and how both countries, in fact, how the region, SADC, can work towards installing peace. Uh, we all agreed that peace was an essential a component of uh, fostering the development of uh, this part of the continent and that in doing so we should bring the conflicts uh, that are happening in the eastern part of the DRC to an end. And also uh, whatever uh, actions that are going on to also uh, destabilize Rwanda through the incursions of the FDLR. So there are a number of forces uh, that operate uh, in this r area and uh, we agreed that a peaceful political solution is the best option uh, to any military action. And beyond discussing with President Kagame, I also had a number of discussions with a number of other leaders. Uh, I also had a very good discussion with President Mbeki, who was also uh, attending the commemoration. And we discussed uh, the situation in the Eastern DRC. I went on to have discussions with other leaders from other countries. And all of us in our discussions uh, expressed a very deep yearning for a peaceful s political solution to the challenges that are being faced here. So I leave uh, Rwanda uh, with a renewed uh, vigor and uh, intention that we should find uh, a solution that will lead to a political solution uh, to what is prevailing here. The people of DRC yearn for peace, and similarly the people of Rwanda also yearn for peace, and so therefore all of us combined, including SADC, uh, should work towards uh, installing a peace in this area so that the conflicts and the violent conflicts, the displacement of people, uh, in the DRC and indeed in Rwanda should come to an end uh, so that there should be peace and silence the guns in this part of uh, our continent. So that is what we are hoping and aiming for. Mm -hmm. uh, Your Excellency, um, since uh, the issue with the DRC, the Rwanda process and the Nairobi process uh, in place, is there a direct role for South Africa now that 
yeah, the South Africa is leading a static force in, in the Eastern DRC. Yes, there is the Nairobi process, there is the Luanda process, and all these processes are collectively aimed at ensuring that uh, the conflict comes to an end. And we take a lot of uh, inspiration from that. Uh, the President Lorenzo of uh, Luanda, who leads SADC, is firmly involved in the process uh, that uh, was initiated, which is the Luanda process. So we work under his leadership and his guidance. And uh, the Nairobi process uh, is a process that uh, was aimed at installing a ceasefire as well as ensuring uh, that uh, there is a political uh, intervention and a solution. South Africa, therefore, has a role to play as well uh, in supporting all these processes. Uh, we are part of SADC and we therefore play a key role uh, in supporting the two processes. So we will not try to install a process on our own. Uh, we will work in tandem with the processes that are underway. We do play an important role in that as members of, of SADC, uh, we want to see peace. And uh, peace is our calling card. That's what we bring uh, to the whole process. And so therefore, uh, we do not see our role being exclusive. We see it being inclusive of all the other processes that are ongoing. And of course, we have to be talking to all parties. We have to interface and interact with all other parties. And uh, with that, I'm sure that uh, we should be able to find solutions to the conflict. Sure. Um, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, um, if you could flesh out some of the uh, details on the, the discussions we ha you had with Mr. President uh, Kagame on resolving um, the standoff around the, the leaders. Um, what are the details? By when would you want this resolved? Were there any timelines that uh, you agreed to? President Kagame and I obviously want the various uh, challenges that uh, uh, we face to be resolved as quickly as possible. And so we have not exactly set out a time frame, but as soon as possible, we want this to be resolved because we want ease of travel uh, for Rwandese to come to South Africa. And uh, we are in the process of dealing with a number of uh, issues as, as it is now through the regulatory processes. So uh, I would not be able to give a time frame, but all I can say is we want Uh, immediately uh, to resolve the challenges that prevail. For South Africa, it's not a good option for us to be <laughs> at loggerheads with any country on the continent. It's, that is uh, not who we are. We, we are a country that, because of our foreign policy, should be uh, at peace with all countries in the world because our remit is a better Africa and a better world. And South Africa should be always committed to having good relations with all countries in the world. And if there are problems and challenges, we must always be on the side of seeking solutions to whatever problems there are. So we are going to resolve these as quickly as possible because not doing so serves the interests of those who may not want to see 
uh, good relations between our two countries. So we want good relations. I certainly want to see good relations between South Africa and Rwanda and indeed all other countries as well. Mr. President, let me uh, say with the thing that um, Rwanda has been with the rebellion in South Africa. Uh, yes. Uh, let me draw a parallel with uh, South Africa, if possible. Uh, 10 years after apartheid, uh, the next election, maybe ANC will lose its majority for the first time. Uh, this can be a very big change for your country. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Well, the two countries uh, have like similarities. Uh, Rwanda is rebuilding itself uh, and it's 30 years that they've been at it and uh, we have been at it for 30 years and we've seen tremendous progress in our own country. The South Africa that we live in today is vastly different from the South Africa. that we had in 1994 and we have seen great improvement, great movement forward. We are a country of 62 million people and many of our people have seen changes in their lives. And like many other countries, we uh, face challenges, a uh, number of challenges that uh, have to be addressed. And we are addressing those challenges. And what I can assure you is that I'll tell you another story. One night, in the letter days of the genocide, I received a surprise visit past midnight from General Darrell. He brought a written message of which I still uh, have a copy from the French general commanding the force that uh, France had just deployed in the western part of our country that uh, operation took cause. The message said that we would pay a heavy price, meaning those of us, the RPF, if our forces dared to try to capture the town of Butari, that is in the southern part of our country. So, and General Darrell gave me additional advice. He said, uh, in fact, he warned me. He said that uh, the French had uh, attacked helicopters and all kinds of arms. Every kind of heavy weapon you can imagine. And therefore, we are prepared to use them against us if we did not comply. I asked Darrell, I asked him whether French soldiers bleed the same way ours do. I asked him whether we have blood in our bodies. 
Then I, I, I thanked him and told him that uh, he should just go and have rest and, and sleep and have his sleep. After, uh, after giving uh, after informing the French that our response would follow. And it did. I immediately radioed the, the commander of the forces that were actually in that direction, in that area, is called uh, Fred Ibinjira. And, and told him to get ready to move. And move to fight. We took Butare, which you were being warned not to enter, uh, we took that town at dawn. Within weeks, the entire country had been secured. And we began rebuilding. We did not have the kind of arms that were being used to threaten us. But I reminded some people that uh, this is our land, this is our country. Uh, those who bleed will bleed over it. We had lost all fear. Each challenge or indignity just made us stronger. After the genocide, we faced the puzzle of how to prevent it from recurring. There were three broad lessons we learned as a result of our experience. First, only we as Rwandans and Africans can give full value to our lives. After all, we cannot ask others to value African lives more highly than we ourselves do. That is the root of our duty to preserve memory and tell our history as we lived it. Second, Never wait for rescue or ask for permission to do what is right to protect people. And that's why some people must be joking when they threaten us with all kinds of things and they don't know what they are talking about. But in any case, that's why Rwanda participates proudly in the peacekeeping operations today and also extends assistance 
to African brothers and sisters by Rattray when asked. Third, stand firm against the politics of ethnic populism in any form. Genocide is populism in its purified form because the causes are political. The remedies must be as well. For that reason, our politics is not organized on the basis of ethnicity or religion. And...